With the entire moonshot resting on the success of his engines, von Braun takes a radical step. A small bomb is planted in the engine to deliberately trigger instability. If the engine copes with the shock waves caused by the bomb, he'll know he's solved it. Firing charge, mark. This failure is turning public opinion against von Braun. How do you answer those who say you're using the tax dollars of the poor to fatten the rich corporations? Look, we don't spend the money on the moon. We spend it here in the United States, creating jobs and new products. Gather around while I sing you a Werner von Braun, a man whose allegiance is ruled by expedience. Call him a Nazi, he won't even frown. A Nazi schmazi, says Werner von Braun. Don't say that he's hypocritical. Say rather that he's apolitical. Once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, says Werner von Braun. Components are redesigned and then test fired at a cost of tens of millions of dollars until von Braun at last gets word of a breakthrough. Excellent, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. So, what was the problem? Well, frankly, sir, uh, I still don't know. But it has been resolved. Well, we found a design of injector plate that cures the instability. I just don't know what caused it in the first place. Anyway, we now have an engine that runs, so uh, the F-1 can go operational. But it could reoccur. He has to build the engines with no guarantee the problem is solved. Why the rush? The Russians appear to be doing nothing. Don't be fooled. The Soviets understand the significance of conquering space. They want to beat us to the moon. And they may surprise us any day now. This is Diamond One. I'm ready to go out. Just as von Braun fears, Koryalov is ready with another historic first. Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov becomes the first man to walk in space. Diamond one calling dog. Everything is going well. Below me I can see clouds. See the Caucasus. <laughs> I can see the Caucasus below me. Koryanov hopes that the spacewalk's impact will help persuade the Politburo to fund his plans for a lunar mission. The suit is performing well. Diamond One, this is Dawn. You have achieved your objectives. Return to the spacecraft. Hell, I can't get back to the spacecraft. The air pressure in my suit is increasing. I can barely move my fingers in my gloves. I can pull myself back to the airlock. Leonov's suit is so inflated, he will never fit back through the airlock. Alexei, try using the release valve to manually vent air from the suit. He struggles for 12 minutes of the airlock. With one last push, he finally manages to climb back into the spacecraft. 
Today, the Soviet Union announced successful completion of the first walk in space. Pilot cosmonaut Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Arkhipovich Leonov spent 23 minutes and 41 seconds outside his spacecraft. The Politburo never reveal how close the mission came to disaster. Von Braun can only assume the Soviets are ahead. And worse still, hostilities are escalating in Vietnam. America is torn apart as the protest movement grows. Von Braun is worried about losing public support for the moonshot. But watching from Russia, Koryanov is acutely aware of the funds at his rival's disposal. The industrial might of America is now focused on NASA's lunar program. In assembly buildings across the country, the gigantic Saturn V is taking shape. In high altitude tests, astronauts are training for each step of a moon mission. In 1965 alone, NASA has been allocated a further $5 billion to spearhead its conquest of space. This is it. I have it. We have approved for a circumlunar flight on the 50th anniversary of the revolution and a manned landing within three years. Now, we can move the N1 into full production. Although they have allocated half the funds we asked for. At last, Koryalov has the go-ahead to compete directly with the American moon mission but with only a fraction of the money. He soon finds a replacement for Glushko to design his new rocket engines, Nikolai Kuznetsov. How many engines are you proposing for the first stage? First stage? 24. 24? We need 24 to deliver enough thrust. Nikolai, the American Saturn has five. Mm -hmm. How are we going to control 24 engines? We'll find a way. It's a brilliant design, which I am pleased to say will make Glushko spit. Oh, how are we going to test a stage of 24 engines? When we launch. Vasily, there's no money. And besides, it would take three years to build a test stand large enough. While his lunar rocket is under construction, Koryalov invites the cosmonauts to see a mock-up of the capsule that will take them to the moon, the Soyuz. It weighs six and a half thousand kilos and can carry three cosmonauts. Leonov, Gagarin and Komarov are his top candidates. The ship has solar panels for extra power, but the most important feature is its maneuverability. Unlike our old Vostok, it can be piloted in space. It can dock with other ships, so it could link and detach to another craft which descends to the moon. Vladimir, take a look. You might be the first to fly. A lot more space than the Vostok. Twice the size. <laughs> well... <laughs> There was some dispute about that. A young designer wanted to make it so small. I drew a chalk circle around him the size he proposed and made him stand in it. We continued our debate. He soon agreed to make the capsule bigger. <laughs> Sergei Pavlovich, are you all right? I'm fine. Don't fuss. Don't fuss. Now. Look. I have to go on. After leaving the cosmonauts, Koryalov collapses with severe heart pains.